when we talk about combustion safety, we're primarily concerned with the ability of a, of a water heater or a furnace, a combustion device, to exhaust combustion byproducts up and out of the building. So what we're concerned with is spillage, and that is combustion byproducts spilling back into the living space. And if that happens for more than maybe two minutes, it's called backdrafting. And combustion byproducts, you know, not only carbon monoxide, which is colorless and odorless and can kill you at high concentrations, uh, combustion byproducts also contain moisture, nitrogen oxides, and, and particulates. So it's really important for, for health and safety to get the combustion byproducts up and out of the building. Now, what you're looking at here is actually a power vented water heater. I had this installed in 2017. Uh, this power vented water heater is not that susceptible to spillage and backdrafting because as the name implies, it's power vented. You can see the, uh, the inducer fan up here, right? This is the fan. And whenever you have uh, heat from down below, there's the burner and this has got an electronic ignition. So there's no standing pilot. Whenever the burner goes on, because you're calling for heat, and let's say you've used some hot water and the tank is filled, it's calling for heat, the burner goes on, but then at the same time, this power, this power vented fan goes on and it's gonna power vent the combustion byproducts up and out of the building through that PVC pipe right there. Okay, so that's exhausted to the outside. This power vent fan here, this inducer fan here, also has like a pressure switch on it so that if you were to block the vent at the end, maybe snow or ice got blocking the vent, it would sense that pressure and it would shut off uh, the burner down below. So again, electronic, uh, electronic ignition, no standing pilot. There's the drip leg. Here's the, the gas, uh, gas line shut off, um, the inducer fan. And again, uh, that makes sure that almost all the time that you're looking at uh, no spillage, uh, not likely to spill or have backdrafting because it's power venting those combustion byproducts up and out of the building. Okay, so that's that's um, that power vented water heater. You can recognize those with the, the PVC venting and uh, the fan on the top. Um, a good device, despite the fact that it's combustion. Um, over here, you'll have my furnace. So this is a, a two pipe, as you can see. Uh, condensing uh, sealed combustion furnace. Okay, again, not very susceptible to spillage or backdrafting because it is sealed combustion. So you can see here on this line here, that's the fresh air coming in, uh, going down into the combustion chamber over here, and then, you know, and then coming back up the other side right there. So as that uh, combustion byproducts are then again taken directly out of the building. So because it is sealed combustion, um, you're not gonna have much chance for spillage or backdrafting, a good measure of safety. It's a condensing furnace too. So, you know, it's got a fairly high efficiency, about 96% efficient on this, on this furnace. Um, and then the other device we have, and this is the one they're gonna focus on. Um, if you have one of these in your house, you'd recognize it by the metal vent. Uh, actually, it's called a vent connector because it connects the appliance uh, to the actual vertical vent or chimney. So this vent connector is nice and straight, you know, a good 18 inches before that first elbow, and then it's short into the actual vertical vent. And that is to convey combustion byproducts, you know, up and out of the building, right? And down here we have what's called a draft diverter. And essentially what that's to do is to divert any downdraft that may come through the chimney and actually blow out the standing pilot light. So these older devices, this is a natural draft water heater called the category one. They actually have a standing pilot light. And you can see here, I put it on pilot and I drain some water from the tank so that when I go to on, it should fire up. Um, you can turn yours to pilot and then run some hot water. Uh, and again, when you turn it to on, it should fire up. Or if you just have it on, you can turn the thermostat up a little bit and that'll get it to fire but be sure to turn the thermostat back down again because you don't want it too hot above 125, 30 degrees and it's a scalding danger. But the deal with this guy here is that combustion byproducts, hot gases, you know, are gonna rely on the natural buoyancy of those gases to rise on up out through the vent connector and through the vertical chimney. So it relies on natural draft, just the buoyancy of those combustion byproducts. And this draft diverter, again, is, is, to meant, is meant to protect the pilot from getting blown out, but it also allows that connection to the, to the house here. So this is where you'd see spillage for up to a minute or two. That's not so bad. 
but spillage after two minutes is called backdrafting and that's what we want to avoid. Okay. So what, what, what causes, why are these vulnerable? Well, they're vulnerable to depressurization. And what I mean by that is the creation of low pressure in this, um, what we call the combustion appliance zone. And one of the first things that we probably want to look at since we're standing right next to the furnace is the furnace. So here's my furnace and then on this side right here, I have the return air, the return drop comes down. It's taking air from the, from the building above, from the bedrooms in the hallway and what, taking return air, bringing it back to the furnace through the filter, through the air handler, through the heat exchanger and up through the supply ducts, you know, to be distributed back to the house. So that's great, but when we come down here and we look at that furnace filter, that has to have a cover on it. This should have a tightly fitting cover because if this is open, you know, this is sucking air in. And if it's sucking air in here, it very well may be causing your water heater to have problems establishing draft. So that's one of the first things you wanna look for when you look at your furnace. Look at the return side and you should notice the return side by the placement of the filter, which is right there and make sure that's a tight fitting cover there. So we're not causing low pressure in this zone, the combustion appliance zone, which could interfere with the draft of your natural drafting water heater. Okay. The other things we want to uh, think about what causes uh, low pressure in buildings with the building buttoned up, all the windows and doors are closed, you know, the dryer. You know, dryers should be vented to the outside, uh, whether they're electric or gas, definitely want to vent these to the outside. So as I turn on my dryer, I'm uh, exhausting air out of the house and for every little bit of air that goes out of the house, an equal amount must come in. And since I've closed up all the windows and doors, the question is, where is that air coming in? You know, could running the dryer impact the operation of the water heater? Maybe, and that's what we're going to test for. So I've turned on my dryer. And since we're doing what we call a worst case or greatest depressurization, I'm also going to turn on the bath fans. So here I have a bath fan in this lower bathroom here. I just turned it on, getting rid of all the moisture and odor that's generated when we use that bathroom, getting it up and out of the house so it doesn't, uh, you know, migrate and condense on the windows on a cold winter day. I have two more bath fans I need to turn on, and we'll see what these this exhaust has, what, what impact that has on the water heater. So here's the next one that's on. And here's the next one to be on in just a second. Yep, that one's going, okay. And now the other fan that you need to turn on or think about, again, pretty, pretty large fan in some houses, it is in my house, is uh, the fan over the kitchen range. So here I have a, a gas cook top there's an induction cooker right there but i have this big kitchen range hood and we'll need to turn this on and see what impact this might have on the on the draft or the uh, water heater's ability to draft now right there i'm on low speed and that might be the preferred setting uh, just getting rid of moisture and odor as it's generated from cooking um, it may not capture all of the particulates and combustion gases off the front burners so it's recommended that you use the back burners Okay, um, but for this case, since we're trying to get to the greatest depressurization achievable in this house, I want to turn this guy on high speed. And there might be times you turn it up to high speed in your house. If you, you know, burn something bad on the stove, you might want to turn it up on high. And now you can see that's quite a bit of air moving out of the house. This combined with the dryer, combined with the bath fans, is moving a fair amount of air out of the building. And the air can't come in, you know, through the design holes, the windows and doors. It's going to come in through the undesigned holes. And the path of least resistance may be that natural draft water heater downstairs. So let's go check and see what's going on down there now. This is the, the test that's kind of the black and white, whether you have spillage or whether you have draft when, uh, when all these devices are operating, um, including your air handler. So, I mean, I could turn on the furnace too particularly if that filter slot was open, I'd want to run that furnace too, because that would also contribute to depressurizing the zone where this water heater is sitting, okay? So now that we're here, you know, I have a couple of ways to check whether there's spillage at this draft diverter right around here. I do have a little inspection mirror that I can put up there. And if it, if it, if it starts to condense, 
the combustion byproducts will condense on the cold glass. That's a sign of spillage. Um, I can also just, you know, like you could feel it with your hand. Don't get too close because it is going to be hot. Now, right now it's not firing up. I haven't turned it from, from pilot to on, but I'll do that in a second. Um, the other thing, you know, you could, I guess, if you had a match or a lighter or something like that, you could try to hold a, a match there and see where the flame is going. Um, is it going in or is it getting blown out? But either feeling it or using in or is it getting blown out but either feeling it or using just a little mirror a handheld mirror that you might have in the bathroom or something hold that up there and see what's going on so i'm going to go ahead and fire this up and we'll see what happens here we go we go down here we go from to on there it goes you heard it now again we would wait two minutes that's the way the test is done but I can already start to feel the hot air coming down. So, so it is spilling at the draft diverter. And again, carbon monoxide, uh, moisture, nitrogen oxides, um, the particulates, small particulates associated with combustion, um, all those things we don't want in our house. So let's see if I can show the, the condensation on the, on the mirror there. It's getting a little warmed up. So when you do the test, you don't want to get the mirror warm. You don't want to have the mirror be warm because then the condensation won't show. Let's see if I cool that off. I'll try it with the lighter. See if it works with the lighter. I mean, again, I can feel the heat coming off there, coming off this draft diverter. not even going to stay lit. It's going to get blown out so quickly because there's a lot of combustion byproducts coming down here now. You can see it's kind of coming at me, coming towards me. Let's try the mirror again. You see how the mirror is fogged up. And you'd want to go all the way around the draft diverter to see if you have any spillage. And again, it's getting fogged up a little bit. So that would be a way to look the black and white. Do you have spillage or are you able to establish draft? Particularly with all the exhaust devices in your house turned on, your largest exhaust devices would probably be your dryer, your kitchen range hood, and then any bath fans that you have in the house that exhaust to the outside. And keep in mind, if you didn't, if you didn't have, remember, look for your filter and your filter slot on your furnace. If you didn't have a cover on that filter slot, then you'd also want to run your furnace. Um, just run it fan on if you have that on your thermostat, or you may want to, you know, call for heat just to get the air handler to kick on, so that you'd continue to bring air in through the filter slot and maybe again impact the ability of your water heater to establish draft. So that's what we got.